Good evening to the folks at home and welcome to see you at USC on Friday night. My name is Dan Toomey and joining me tonight is Mr. John Canning, the Vice President of Interactive Media at NBC and so much more. It's bound to be a great interview. You're not going to want to miss it. Stick with us. And thank you so much for sticking with us through that intro. Once again, my name is Dan Toomey for CU at USC on Friday night. And Mr. John Canning was kind enough to join us for tonight. Thank you so much Absolutely. for, for uh, agreeing to be on the show. It's very exciting to have you here. So um, just to quickly start from the beginning, I, uh, you began as a, as a documentarian, correct? Or where, like, where did oh. your career first begin before joining NBC and, and all of the other different fields that you're affiliated with right now. Right, so this is a mini-series we're shooting, right? Because sure, it's yes. going to take that yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? No, we're prepared. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. So everybody should sit back mm -hmm. and take a while. <laughs> uh, no, I, the funny part is I actually started my life as an electrical engineer. Really? Uh, yep, uh, specializing in something called radio frequencies. Um, so uh, I actually had the fine experience in my college career of building a antenna for VHF and testing it. That was my mm -hmm. project. Yes, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Completely worthless at this point in time. But yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no. So I, I literally started life building cable boxes mm -hmm. and cable modems and working with the infrastructure to deliver media. Um, and I've had a, I'd like to say, a twisted career wandering, not a path. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, spent time working at Microsoft, uh, working on all the middleware. Mm, yeah. Um, uh, the funny part is, I got my start really in interactive television back w in the days when Microsoft had bought web TV and mm -hmm. and uh, I like to say I've spent the last 20 years trying to sell Jennifer Aniston sweater really <laughs> which is the you know back in web TV days we had interactive friends and no could, way yeah you could click on Jennifer Aniston sweater and you know, still 25 years later we're still messing around <laughs> with and this. it hasn't yeah we still haven't done it I, I still <laughs> it hasn't been sold it. yet nobody's willing to buy uh, <laughs> and uh, spent a uh, period of my life uh, actually out in the field shooting and doing documentary work mm -hmm. and um, really doing a lot of travel and cause related projects mm -hmm. and uh, uh, media and technology always sucks me back in sure so uh, I eventually got a chance to come join NBC mm -hmm. um, where I build interactive experiences mm -hmm. which I like to see say means everything mm -hmm. and nothing uh, hmm. it's the you know, when I say interactive experience, I'm like, people, well, what is that? Yeah, it's, precisely. It's all the things around our shows uh, that is beyond that linear television. Mm -hmm. So I work on the things that affect the shows. Um, I work on things that are like the voting and the voice mm -hmm. or, or things like that, where it impacts the show mm -hmm. uh, and that early stage development of that. And then in the industry, I, I work with the Producers Guild. I chair the New Media Council for the Producers Guild. Uh, and uh, that has been a fabulous experience because it is, it's working with like-minded like folks. We mm -hmm. used to be those, those kids on the side and now we're yeah. the, those kids that are trying to explain the next yeah. new thing. Definitely. And I mean, what, what is that next new thing, would you say? You know, what I like to say is, is that, you know, what I say today will be old tomorrow and then it'll be a new thing. Mm -hmm. um, certainly things like Snapchat, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, it is now a serious form where people are producing content for it uh, big media brands are producing content for that where mm. you if you think of what snapchat started as mm -hmm. it was not big media brands on there no no it wasn't um, you know uh, i do a lot of work with augmented reality virtual mm -hmm. reality uh, but again these are just new interesting ways to tell stories mm -hmm. they're new platforms uh, and combining that in different and unique ways mm -hmm. um, I often tell people when they say, oh, we're going to do virtual reality for everything. I was like, it's not the right tool for yeah. every job. Mm -hmm. And that, that was actually something I wanted to ask is I feel like when people, especially now, when they think of the concept of interactive media, I think virtual reality is such a, a, a headliner topic right now. I mean, do you feel like virtual reality has come to dominate this, this umbrella statement of interactive media? No. no I, honestly, I, I once did a talk in Amsterdam uh, that was about interactivity, and mm -hmm. I I, I started this way and I said, you know what interactivity is? It's saying, hi, my name is John Canning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. If you start at this basis, sure. right, then it's just 
what are the tools to doing that mm. interactivity? Virtual reality, in some cases, is completely not interactive. Yeah. It's a passive, experiential thing. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the interactivity is simply the act of a voting mechanism. Mm. Um, what it means is you're actually asking for feedback, getting feedback. You're doing, you're interacting yeah. with your audience. Mm -hmm. You're not just passively pushing something towards them. Mm -hmm. um, social media is a form of interactivity. Um, it just goes beyond the broadcast, mm -hmm. right? You know. Yeah. If we, viewers were watching this and they could ask us questions, that's a form of interactivity. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's a very, like I said, it means everything and nothing. It's, mm -hmm. it's a broad category. It just means instead of just having a one-way conversation, you're having a two-way conversation. Yeah, which really expands, uh, I guess, the, the idea of media in general. You're connecting with the people that you're also entertaining at the same time. And I think staying on kind of this topic of how the audience can relate to um, to the entertainment that they're witnessing, you've been in the media business for so long. I mean, how have you seen it evolve from the, from the time you've been in it? Wow, that just makes me sound old. <laughs> uh, you've been in the media business yes. since it was analog. <laughs> um, you know, what I find is that a lot of what we're trying to do is not new, mm -hmm. it's just better. Uh, really? If you look at the tools and the techniques, um, we did an inter interactivity with analog set-top boxes and uh, data streams on the next channel up. Mm. Um, what it is is it becomes more seamless. Uh, as we talked, you know, as that technology just becomes ubiquitous, you don't know it's technology. Mm. Um, and so cer certain things we're used to now were, you know, tired and cumbersome and hard to do. Mm -hmm. Now you just expect that information. Mm. Um, you know, you see augmented reality on television every day. Really? If, if you think about a sporting program where they're putting on a, a lower third or they put that artificial, you know, uh, uh, downline mm -hmm. on there, that's, all, that's augmented reality. Hmm. You know, if you look at television today and you see some show, half the stage may be practical and half the stage may be built yeah. in the graphics yeah. machine in the, in the truck. Mm -hmm. So a lot of this is just starting to blend these techniques together to mm -hmm. more effectively do what we're doing. Yeah. What's interesting is, is if you if you marvel at YouTube or you think about Amazon mm -hmm. or Netflix, guess what? They're making broadcast television, mm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, what is YouTube but mostly a broadcast network mm -hmm. to shove content out to people? Mm -hmm. Now, there is now some interactivity and, you know, but the vast majority of it is a fire and forget. I push it out there and it goes. Mm. Um, Amazon and Netflix making great television and great movies. Yeah. But they're not they're just using the medium as a distribution. Mm. If, you know, television at one point was defined as three things. The glass, the distribution method, and the content, right? So I watched television on a screen, mm -hmm. it was distributed over the air, um, and it was that episodic thing. Yeah, it was what you were watching, sure. Now we've pulled that apart, right? So now what television is, is a type of content. Mm -hmm. Because the distribution means all over the map. Yeah. And the screens that I watch it on, from here, to yeah. here. So you look at that, you realize that you know what is changing is maybe the means of distribution, but we're still doing a lot of the same kinds mm -hmm. of things. Then to push that boundary, um, I saw some clever uh, game wardens in South Africa that are now taking you on a, a game drive live really? from wherever you are in the world. In South Africa. In South Africa, <laughs> because what they're doing is they're wearing a backpack, they're using cellular bonded signals, mm -hmm. And they're doing a live Facebook live yeah. moment, right? So it's broadcast, but what they're doing is they're encouraging that commentary, mm -hmm. that interaction. Yeah. So that's what fascinates me about this. But we're just getting better tools to do a lot of the stuff that we've been trying to do all along. Mm -hmm. and, and better tools such as such as what? I mean, is this is this um, because I feel right now people see virtual reality and they think, oh, it's the big uh, uh, Oculus helmets, or you know, they're going to be walking around with with massive equipment. I mean. Do you feel like you, right now you're in a, you're in a space as uh, somebody affiliated with interactive media? Do you feel like you're in a space right now to put this into the open market for everybody? Well, it it is in the open market, mm -hmm. right? Um, but what we see is this is like a raging river, right? Like this is not a still pond that I can jump in and it I just stay there. Sure. The development of this is changing every day. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say it's probably cumbersome for a lot of people to put this thing on your head. Exactly. And still, for the most part, tethered to a machine and cumbersome to set up. And But it's sort of the experimental stage. It's mm. the giddy sort of crazy time to jump in and mm -hmm. play with it. 
already with PlayStation VR. Now it's a, a peripheral to a, a game yeah. device you already have. What's fascinating about this is we've been playing with this stuff for many, many years. Really? But you're you're seeing certain technological advances that are making it faster, better, stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, those will continue to iterate. Mm -hmm. We still need to figure out how to create for these new mediums, mm -hmm. right? And we figure out how to distribute for these new mediums. So all of these things are going on simultaneously. Mm -hmm. It's a great time to be involved in it. Yeah. Is it mass market? Probably not. Mm -hmm. But what I like to look at is that the important thing is is that where the advances are in, in medicine, uh, architecture, mm -hmm. industrial, those are really gonna push the advances. Those mm -hmm. don't need to be mass market. Mm -hmm. What to me virtual reality is right now is where the, the consumers are probably going to experience it most are installations, arcades. So if really? you think of the arcades of the 80s where you know kids were learning, oh, this is a video game. Sure. And then it would go into the, and then yeah. they were like, how yeah. do I get this in the home? If you think of VR, that's what's happening right now. Yeah. Where a lot of people are gonna experience high fidelity, mm -hmm. premium quality VR is going to be, say IMAX VR on, on near the Grove. Yeah. They're gonna experience that and go, how can I get this at home? Mm. Not yet, but you will. But in the future. Of. Yeah. yeah, just like now, how Pac-Man was condensed sure. and now you have it on your phone. Exactly. Sure. So we're looking at those moments right now. We're looking at where industries that, frankly, can put a lot of money into it, mm -hmm. that you want to put this headset on because you're doing a better surgery mm -hmm. or you're fixing an air, airplane engine or you're using augmented reality glasses. Those people are putting it on their heads for a reason, mm -hmm. right? Not for pure enjoyment of exactly. back experience. So that will push the medium forward. Mm -hmm. And then what you see is the entertainment industry gets to be the happy beneficiaries mm -hmm. of those iterations. Mm -hmm. and, and we mentioned earlier, I mean, you and I discussed this earlier, how it's not necessarily that, that I mean, it has to be to a certain type of, of story, I suppose, or a certain narrative, correct? Uh, so is that, yeah. does that ever like hamper the process of trying to develop where you have to find a, a specific story for this type of media? What, what I think you, you have to think about it, like I often say to people, if you can think of a different way to shoot this, you probably don't want to need to shoot it in 360 hmm. because then what you're doing is you're applying potentially gratuitous 360 to something that doesn't need that. Mm. You know, if right now we take what we're doing here, mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be in 360 no. unless people are really fascinated mm -hmm. about the behind the scenes because what's going on is in front of them, mm -hmm. 180 potentially. So that is, you know, crafting it, it's a tool set mm -hmm. to telling a story. When anybody that's experienced a first person uh, video game shooter or, or experience understands being immersed in an environment and being able to travel through that environment. Hmm. I do, I look at documentaries, I look at travel, I use look at the cause related mm -hmm. aspects of this. Where you do want to immerse somebody in an environment, you want to put them in a place and get that sense of place. Sure. Uh, narrative, when you look at narrative, it's harder to do mm -hmm. because then you have to ask the question of, why is that user there? Mm. What is going on? Live action narrative in VR is still pretty much a point where you're looking at it all around you. Mm. We haven't, in, a, in a, an efficient way, achieved volumetric live really? action shooting where I can then interact in a live action environment. Mm -hmm. Now, there's companies working on it, the Lytros, Hype VR. There's some amazing stuff going on right now. Mm -hmm. But Game Engine VR, enables me to move in and around the environment, interact with my objects. Mm -hmm. Narrative, uh, live action, not so much. So how are we telling our stories? What are we using to tell our stories? And then the distribution methods are A, all over the map, and B, just not deployed in high numbers yet. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, we have to go to a quick commercial break right now, but I would love to talk more about what this means for the future of media technology if you have time to stick around. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. All right, well, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, John Canning is still uh, here with us in the second half. Don't go anywhere. Is this the part where we smoke them if we got them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to see you at USC on Friday night. My name is Dan Toomey, and we're being joined tonight by Mr. John Canning, the Vice President of Interactive Media at NBC. Thank you so much once again for joining us. It's been a pleasure to have you on so far. Um, so in the first half, we talked a lot about not only your history with interactive media, but where you see it evolving in the future. And I think that you talked about how technology becomes ubiquitous over time. And uh, do you, what technologies do you see 
as you know tapering off once we see the development of, of interactive media in the future like do you see linear TV as falling off sure sure and I'd like to point out that I like I like the fact that you said so far like at some point I'm just gonna be <laughs> yeah. escorted from the yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that <laughs> um, what I meant by technology for technology to be widely accepted sure it it achieves that state of ubiquity mm -hmm. is you know the doorknob piece of technology but it's just there it's got that ubiquitous mm -hmm. um, aspect to it it's when technology ceases to be seen as technology mm -hmm. then it is achieved that moment you know that's that's where it's done a transition mm -hmm. when you stop thinking about it as oh that's technology mm -hmm. and let's face it uh, I think the technology industry uh, constantly puts stuff in your face right mm -hmm. like you know your phone or you're happy with your phone until that moment that it crashes or it, yeah. it can't make a phone call mm -hmm. right and there, there was a moment where you know the dial phones that you know they mm -hmm. just worked right. There was that just you always picked it up. It always worked. There wasn't an issue. Then we broke that, mm -hmm. and then we handed you something that was problematic and mm -hmm. would constantly need updating. And but it's it's got more new, new and interesting features. But it's it's not. It still smacks you mm -hmm. of being yeah. in front of your face. So I think. You know, if you look at the flat screen TV, a, a TV of any kind, you know, some display device, and you pump media into it, you're not thinking about that as much. Mm -hmm. But then we decide to mess with it. We give you a little box. We say you got to hook this cable into mm -hmm. it. It breaks that again. Yeah. Right. And then there's that next adoption cycle of getting used to something. Sure. Um, what has been fascinating, I think, about, and if you look at the history of technology, is we're rapidly accelerating that. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, it's. It used to be there were periods of time that were much longer before the evolution changed mm. or revolution of something. Now we're changing it every day. Mm. We're changing it. Just about the time you're used to something, we're like, oh, that's not good enough. Yeah. Here, here yeah, take yeah, this yeah. new thing. Um, and so that is tough for the adoption. I mean, we've mm -hmm. almost bred now in, in our modern society this acceptance of I'm going to have something that's going to break. Mm -hmm. um, it's just going to have a problem, it's going to fail, I'm not going to be able to connect to the internet. Um, but the good news is our blender still works usually. You yeah. push a button, it blends, go mm -hmm. us. Um, so it's just interesting that for n you know this new cutting edge, we're, we keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Mm -hmm. you know, what is going to take for things like VR, AR, is a certain amount of comfortable you know, yeah. it's the human factor, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we were talking about watching a, a movie on in a VR headset. Sure. Two hours with something heavy strapped onto your head. It's just jarring, yeah. It's not jarring, it's just uncomfortable, sure. right? Like, then you ask yourself, why? Yeah. Right, I got other ways to watch that mm -hmm. are much more comfortable. Um, you have to have that reason, and then the reality is we gotta iterate, make mm -hmm. it faster, better, stronger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like cell phones, right? Used to be big, clunky, yeah. cumbersome. Now slim, fit in your pocket. Um, you know, it's that constant. It just iteration. finds a way somehow. Well, it's 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 the form factor, the the human factor aspect mm -hmm. of it, the um, the you know the usability of it is mm -hmm. the key, and you can't lose that because mm -hmm. you can make the most brilliant technology, um, but it won't achieve that ubiquity unless the usability is there. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you mentioned the the high speed that consumers are faced with now, or, or that you know you're constantly testing stuff. Right now, you said we're in the experimental stages of this. I mean, do you think that is is dangerous at all to be constantly throwing new forms of of entertainment or interactive media at consumers in in terms of like their acceptance process of it? Oh, you know, I tell you what, uh, I used to joke that I said if if I'm working on something, you probably oughtn't to play with it for the next couple of years because <laughs> usually I'm like out there yeah. doing crazy things. No, I think it's okay, but it's, it's it, you have to put it in context. Mm. Uh, the key is to, I wouldn't tell, you know, my mom, oh, get, go get one of these. It's, you know, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that to her. Yeah. Um, I don't even try to do it to my own family mm -hmm. uh, because when I do, I get in trouble. <laughs> um, but it, you have to realize that a lot of people are looking at this and, and excited about it. Um, sure. But it is not mainstream yet, mm -hmm. right? And and the people that work in it, and this is a danger of any technology industry, is when you live in your own bubble of, well, everybody's doing this. This must be the thing. Mm -hmm. And then realize there are a lot of other people that, no. Yeah. You're, you're, you're subjecting them to needless pain. Mm. Um, but there's iterative steps. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, you know, we used to say that, you know, Google Cardboard was sort of the gateway 
drug for a VR hmm. because you had a piece of cardboard that yeah. was very simplistic. You could put your cell phone into it, and that gave you some part of that experience. Mm -hmm. So there's there's ways into sure. it, right? But we on that cutting edge, you almost have to have a buyer beware sticker that says, you know, you can come in, mm -hmm. but it's not done yet. Exactly. You know, if you want to complain that mm -hmm. oh, we're you know, you can burn through the VR content in one of the stores fairly quickly. But that's because it is the iterative stages of it. Mm -hmm. If you look at some of the, the flagship companies now that are making visual content uh, in this medium, a lot of it is experiments. It's mm. proof of concepts. It's, it's amazing pieces to show what can be done. Um, there's a company called uh, uh, Within that created uh, Life of Us, uh, mm -hmm. where it, it, it was a grand experiment. It's, it's winning a lot of awards and, and getting a lot of attention. Really? It's a beautiful piece. It's a shared VR experience. Really? Where you start life as in the primordial ooze and you evolve as you okay. and your companion evolve. Mm -hmm. um, all in CGI. Mm -hmm. But it's an interesting experience because it's a shared VR experience. It's just, so there are multiple there are multiple people. In, in the same room. time. That's interesting. You know, as so the people talk about social VR. Yeah. So again, it's just all these things are crazy experiments. And some are gonna flame out. Mm -hmm. Some are gonna go into dead end paths. Yeah. Um, you know, what I think is always fascinating is you know, you don't always know exactly the through line of this. Sure. Uh, but what I think we see as an industry is there's something here. Mm. We're 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 working on it, mm -hmm. but like I said, if you, you you step back for a second, what I think is fascinating about this is it isn't just about entertainment, right? Yeah. There's, you know, there's a company that's making augmented reality glasses, working with Caterpillar, which makes bulldozers mm -hmm. and yeah. earth moving equipment, that it, you know engineers are using them to repair the machine. Really. There's doctors that are doing surgery with these things. That's funny. So it's so it's not purely entertainment no, based. No, no, and and I think that's what's going to save what. What is going to help propel this along is we're not relying on the entertainment industry to save it. Okay. Because let's face it, if I if I work at a large broadcaster and I look at what my audience is, my demographic, it's not the people, the few million people that own VR sure. headsets. Sure. You know, yeah. unless I'm Sci-Fi Channel and mm -hmm. I'm jealous because <laughs> yeah. their mapping with <laughs> VR headsets is right over the yeah. top, right? But so that's the thing that right now is is that the the architecture firm that just wants to take their clients through a an exploded view of a building mm. or things like that or travel um, you know any number of travel firms I know are like okay well I can tell you about my villa in you wow. know, Borneo or I can put this headset on you and let you walk through the mm -hmm. villa in, in Borneo so what would you like to do yeah I mean it's, it's it sounds like I mean, what surprises me is that I had no idea that, do you, I mean, do you do a lot of work with, with uh, companies like outside of purely entertainment? Absolutely, and and probably more my role in the Producers Guild, I work in a broader VR industry. Sure. Um, and I work with companies all across the, the scale. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at, there's a company called Daiquiri, which is an augmented reality company right mm -hmm. now. They're focused in the industrial. And really? Because that's where the, you'll have lower volumes at higher return. And do you see high investment from those industrial companies? Absolutely, because I mean Boeing or uh, you know any number of these companies are using it because GE, if you look at what GE is doing really? in just locomotive engines and mm -hmm. and and uh, airplane engines, they're constantly pushing the edge. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think the investment and the advances are going to come from. We in the entertainment industry are just going to be the happy recipients of it. That's interesting. And and so I guess we we have about minute and a half left. Um, you do a lot of work at USC. You've been here to lecture before, and mm -hmm. I think you mentioned how pushing the envelope is so uh, important to what you do. What advice do you have for students who, who are just looking to enter this interactive media, because there is an interactive media major at USC. Mm -hmm. What advice do you have for those students who are looking to break through in this industry, or at least enter it? Sure, I think no history. Sure. Uh, because I run into a lot of people that are like, they've never done this before. Mm -hmm. The reality is probably somebody's done it, they just didn't do it with the same tools in the same way. Hmm. Um, if you look at the VR, you know, people are like, well, what about 3D and why did that flame out? Knowing the history of that helps you understand where you're going. Mm. So always having things in context and know where it fits in the scheme of things, I think does help mm -hmm. pushing that medium. Yeah, I mean, is that is that where VR has primarily learned from? Is, is the 3D or? Uh, I would say I'm not sure they learn from it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But occasionally you have to point out to people because the question was, is why is 
why is it going to do any better than 3D? Because mm. the same arguments are being made. Mm -hmm. And I would argue that part of the reason is because the 3D industry was being propped up around entertainment, mm. and where else would you find it? Yeah. Here, a lot of other areas. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, in, in just one quick statement, I suppose, where do you see the future of VR heading, heading or interactive media in general? I, I, it's just going to get bigger and better and more interesting. Really? Frankly, I, the, what's beautiful about it is we are just getting into more and more experiential uh, mm. and we're exploding the experiences that we can bring to, s to any part of the world. Mm -hmm. and, and it sounds like it's happening every day, right, at our fingertips. Every day. Wow. I mean, and, and especially when you're considering how, how, how much we become integrated in society with it, it sounds like it's going to be part of our daily lives. I think that it's, it's a continuum. I mean, the thing is that people put, say, VR, they say AR. The reality is, is that as the displays and the delivery get better, it's a continuum between giving you information overlaid into your world to going completely opaque mm -hmm. and then having it immersed in an environment. Mm -hmm. And the ability to go and move through that as opposed to say, oh, I wear this for this or this for that, that's where we're going. Sure. It's that ability to choose how much information do you want overlaid into your world. Well, Mr. Canning, thank you so much thank for you. joining us. It's really been a pleasure. Uh, for Mr. John Canning, my name is Dan Toomey. Thank you so much for sticking with us, and we'll see you next week at CU at USC. Have a good night.